Greetings and welcome back. We've now added rocks. We've got trees, man. Our, our terrain is looking great. But if we walk around, in fact, let me go ahead and just hit play, we have a little bit of a problem. Our sky is not the most realistic thing I've ever seen. Right now, we just have this plain blue color, which is not working too well for me. And so what I'd like to do in this video is add in a skybox. Now, Lee, can you tell me what a skybox is? All right. A skybox is basically a piece of geometry that you can't see in your game, but the Unity um, engine itself, when it's rendering, is going to draw it before it draws anything else. Now, the trick with it is it's actually using a, um, a rendering where everything is going to draw over it, but it seems to be infinite in distance. Wow, that's like a really technical way to say it's going to make it look like there's a sky around your level. Well, that's true. It does make it look like there's a sky around your level. I mean, you could have just said that, and that would have been fine. But I like being overcomplicated. Okay, all right. I'll go with that. So Lee is absolutely right, uh, but what we're going to do is create all of that technical cool stuff that Lee just said in order to give the illusion that there is a sky wrapped around our level. And he's right. Because it is going to be drawn first, and everything else will be drawn on top of it, it will give the illusion that it is infinitely far away the way a sky generally tends to feel when you're out walking around in a world. So, how do we do this? Well, there's a couple of different ways, and I'm going to show them both to you. First off, make sure that under your standard assets, you did remember to load in the Skyboxes package. If you didn't, you just need to come up under Assets, come down to Import Package, go all the way to your Unity installation, and you will find a standard Assets folder inside of which you'll see the Skyboxes package. Go ahead and get that imported if you didn't do it at the very beginning. Now, I did tell you to, but it's easy to overlook. Could happen to anybody. Now, the two ways in which we can add a Skybox are to the actual camera through which we see our, our scene, our world while we play, or we can kind of add it to the scene itself, kind of like a default setting. So I'll show you how to add both. First off, we'll add it to the camera. If you take a look at your first person controller here inside the hierarchy, you'll notice it's got a little arrow next to it and we can expand that. And we have the graphics, which is the little tiny capsule that uh, sits inside of it. And we have the main camera. This is the camera that the player looks through. Now, because I really don't like starting off over there in the hot spring anymore, it was cool for like five minutes, I'm going to grab first person controller, and then here inside my view I'll tap W, and I'll drag this back over to the campground. I'm going to hit the F key, make sure that I'm not down through the ground like I am right now. We'll just drag this straight up with a little green arrow, bring that up in the Y axis, and there we are. So now we'll start where the campground is supposed to be. Now, to add a skybox to the camera, well, let's just take a look at the camera. So if we click on the main camera, we can see all of the different things for it. Now, these are all collapsed right now, but we can expand them all out. This is probably closer to what you would see if you just clicked on this for the first time. You see uh, the transform information, which gives you its position. You see all of the different camera settings. You see the GUI layer, the flare layer, the mouse look script, which is allowing us to you know, make the uh, camera look around while we move. I'm going to close all of this stuff back up. I don't really want anybody to see this, think about it, focus on it, or anything right now. What we're going to do is add on another one of these components that is specifically intended to allow us to draw out a skybox. Make sure you have the camera selected. And actually, before we do anything, I want to point this out. Notice that the first person controller right now is the only thing that is blue. That's going to become important here in a minute, and I'll explain why that is here in just a moment. First off, let's go under Component, jump down to Rendering, and choose Skybox. And something really interesting is going to happen when we click the mouse. We get a window that says, Adding a component will lose the prefab parent, which, if you're new to this stuff, that's almost like a cryptic riddle. What that means is, the character controller that we have in our scene was originally, in fact, let me cancel this because it's a modal window, so I have to acknowledge this window before I can do anything else. Let's click cancel. Our character controller was dragged right out of the character controllers folder here inside of our project view. This means that the version of it that is in our hierarchy view is directly referencing all of the settings found within the version in the project folder. Basically, if we were to come over here to the project version of it, like here underneath the project view, click on first person controller, we have all of the same settings available over here that we have over in the hierarchy setting. And anything we change in the project view will update over inside the hierarchy view. And that is designated because of the blue highlight. 
basically all, what that's telling you is that all of this guy's settings are directly referencing its original parent. However, as soon as we add a skybox component onto our camera, now suddenly the child has become different from the parent and we lose that connection. So it's important to note. Now there's some things that go along with that. You have the ability to revert back to the original. You also have the ability to take any changes you've made and send them back up to the parent, which can be useful if all of the other objects you have, all the other copies of that object from the project folder, you want to have those same settings. But I don't really want to get into all of that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a very deep subject. and we'll, we'll cover it again in another video. But for the most part, if it's blue, you're working on an instance of the prefab that is inside your project. That's right. So we're going to destroy the fact this is an instance by changing our main camera. So select your main camera, come under Component, jump down to Rendering, and we'll choose Skybox. And again, we get the warning this will lose the prefab parent, which is fine. It doesn't break anything. But notice it's no longer hi highlighted blue because the child is now different than the parent because the child now has a skybox component bolted onto it. Now here we can see the skybox component which has only a single property which is the custom skybox. This is a reference to a material, uh, specifically a cube map material, that will be used to place the skybox into our level. So let's go ahead and close up character controllers and here inside the project view we'll expand skyboxes. And we have a few to choose from. I'm going to pick specifically on Overcast 2. That's the one we're actually going to be using. And we'll just drag that in, like so. And currently, here inside the view, we don't really see anything. But let's go ahead and give this a look if we hit play. And now we see clouds in the sky. And if we can get out here, where maybe we're a little bit away from the trees, climb up a little bit higher in altitude, you can see a lot more of that cloudy sky up there in the distance. And you can add any one of these you like. So if I stop playing, we can grab, say, the Moonshine skybox and drag that over and hit play. And now it's nighttime. And if we back up, there's the moon. So by all means, play with these and pick one that you like. We're going to go with Overcast 2, but you see how that works. All we did is add the component onto the camera. Note that we didn't add it onto the first person controller. We didn't add it onto the graphics object. We added it onto the main camera game object. That's important to note. Now, that's one way to add a skybox. We, what I'm going to do go, for now, though, is go ahead and remove that out. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, or just click the right, right mouse button, and choose Remove Component. And that takes that right back out again. So if I was to click Play, we're back to our base blue default background color. There is a second way to add skyboxes, and this is useful if you don't want to have to add a component to your camera, uh, break any parenting uh, con you know, connections from uh, our project, which doesn't really matter to us. We're not going to really be utilizing the fact that they were connected anyway. But to do this, we need to come under Edit and jump down to the Render Settings for our scene. And there's all kinds of stuff in here that we will be taking a look at a little bit later, things like fog, uh, things like halo strength and flare strength. What I want to do, though, is take a look right here at the skybox material. This allows us to set kind of a default skybox material that is going to be visible if no other camera happens to have its own skybox component like what we just added. Basically, this is, this is the fallback. It's also useful if you end up moving into a game that has split view. Let's say you decide to make a game that has side-by-side -side play or four different cameras and you're playing four-way on your game. Now you've got four cameras, but you want all four to show the same skybox. If you put it here, you no longer have to set up all four cameras with the same skybox. Exactly right. Now let's take our skybox material, and once again, we'll just grab Overcast 2, drag that right here. And now actually, because it's there at the default level, we'll see it in the editor. Now I just tapped the space button, and that expanded my view. Let's go ahead and just tap it again. But we don't even have to hit play now to see the results of this, which can be really useful. Now, if we hit play, there we go. We have our skybox. So there's a couple of different ways you can add skyboxes into your level. Uh, feel free, of course, to play around with the skyboxes that came along with Unity and pick one that you like. And wow, we just got rocks all over the place here that I'm going to have to clean up. But we'll get to that. 
So uh, let's go ahead and hit stop. And I think that's everything I really wanted to show here. Lee, is there anything else you want to throw out? No, I'm good. All right, cool. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. And in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can add a more realistic sunlight.